A new patient group nation. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Brian right here and welcome to season three, episode number one. Looking forward to a great season. Seems like season two just ended. Time is just flying by. Hope everyone had a great Christmas out there. Happy New Year to everybody. Hope your 2020 is off to a great start and hope you spend a lot of time with friends and family. Kind of relax, reset the brain. You know, the only problem with resetting the brain is the fact once the brain has to get started again, once the uh, <laughs> once the new year gets rolling, sometimes that can be a little bit difficult. But nevertheless, uh, we're ready to fire into season three. Got a good one for you today. Going to be talking about what story is your brand going to tell throughout 2020 and beyond. And we're going to be talking about from from acquisition all the way to conversion and in between. How you need to put that on harmony, and it's one of the reasons of many that New Patient Group exists, is teaching our clients and having services for our clients that allow you to tell this story from point A to point Z and everywhere in between of hospitality, customer service, and again, that dirty word in healthcare sales that we'll talk about today. Avid listeners, you know the word. You're not scared of it uh, because you actually know what the definition of it is. Uh, But if you're new to the podcast and you hear that word, it may be making you feel uncomfortable, uh, but that's what we do here in the podcast is make you feel uncomfortable because that's what you have to do to move yourself and your business forward. A couple things I'm going to announce on the front end after we do the, the intro is we have a really cool webinar series coming up this year that we decided to do. And our first one's going to be coming up a little bit later in January. So we're going to get fired away with this episode. Let's fire up the music. When we come back, we got a lot of good things to introduce, and then we'll dive in to that story your brand's going to be telling in 2020. Let's get things going. Let's fire up the music. Welcome to the New Patient Group Podcast, where doctors, office managers, and other healthcare professionals learn how to thrive in today's competitive marketplace by mastering the business, consumer, and marketing aspects of the practice. If you want to make more money, dominate the competition while working, spending, and stressing less, this podcast is for you. Now your host, he is the leading authority in the new era of practice growth, founder and CEO of New Patient Group, managing partner of Right Chat, speaker and consultant for Align Technology, the makers of Invisalign, author for the Benson Koppel Resource, international motivational speaker, business and life coach, Brian Wright. Hey everybody, welcome inside the broadcast booth. Again, hope your 2020 is off to a great start. Looking forward to a good one today. As I was talking about on the front end, a couple updates I want to give you. I want to start off with talking to you about this new webinar series we're going to be doing this year. And it is a free webinar series uh, to continue my mission, my belief. You know, I've told people all for the past 20 years, helping their business and their personal life grow is my, my mission and my belief. First of all, my belief is the fact that I believe every human being can achieve prosperity. I, I wholeheartedly believe that no matter Uh, You know, what color you are, what gender you are, what your background is. Everyone has their issues, right? Everyone comes with their own set of problems. And I've always said each person kind of thinks their own problems are unique and worse than other people. In reality, it's not the case. We all have our issues. It's really how you face the issues and how you view and really your outlook on life. So I really believe every single human being can achieve prosperity if they do the right things, uh, both in their personal and and their business life. Uh, so one of our, our continued ways of doing that is is making sure I'm able to help as many people as possible. That That's always been my passion uh, that follows up with my belief. If, if for, for those of you out there that have listened to the podcast we did on the seven steps to achieving prosperity, it talks about, you know, everyone talks about the why, uh, you know, you've got to know your why and things like that. And, and it absolutely, I talk about this in the podcast and then a lot of my life coaching clients around the world Uh, The reality is, is it drives me nuts because of course you need your why. The problem is, is what happens afterwards. Very few people then know what to do with their why. And it's always been such a huge absence in training uh, when people talk about their why. And that's what that podcast is about. But that's what also is, is it's following it in specific steps. And because my passion and my belief is that every human being can achieve prosperity, uh, one of the things that I do as a follow-up for, to that to, to help ensure my why is implemented is finding ways, any way we can, to help as many people achieve that as possible. And one of those ways this year is going to be our webinar series that I'm really excited about because this webinar series is going to really focus on a lot of really neat things uh, that are going to help your business. Now, a lot of the webinars we're going to have are also going to be podcasts. A lot of the podcasts we have are going to be turned into webinars Uh, But it's only to help you guys that much more because what the webinars are going to do 
and most of them, there will be exceptions, but most of them, I'm going to be the host, and the vast majority of them are going to be live. And the cool thing about that is, is that way we can come together as a community and almost have kind of a mastermind forum, per se, is that, you know, I'll give the presentation. Sometimes it may be 20 minutes, sometimes it may be an hour, but the beauty then is the fact that we get to then sit with each other on a live webinar and answer questions and really help each other out. So this webinar and mastermind forum, uh, I'm really excited about. And like I said, it's going to be free of charge, and we're going to try to get as many people on those and help as many people this year as possible. Our first one's going to be on January 24th, and it's going to be at 10 a.m. Central. You know, it's a balance between East and West Coast time, right? So 10 a.m. Central is when we're going to start these, and that's 8 West Coast. I believe if you're in Colorado, that's, you know, that that time zone, that's 9 o'clock and then 11 o'clock Eastern. So it's a pretty safe kind of in-between time for everybody. And we're going to be talking about the fixed versus growth mindset. And it's going to be the seven mindset shifts to ensure 2020 is your best year ever. Okay, it's going to be a webinar focused on culture, leadership, teamwork, and really how to create a winning mindset that dominates the competition. If you go to newpatientgroup.com backslash webinar registration, uh, you can learn more about that. And then there'll be buttons you can click to actually officially register for the webinar. And when you register a day or two prior to the webinar, you'll receive login access and there's relatively limited seating uh, because we do have webinar. We do it through a go-to meeting, and there's webinar, uh, you know, and a webinar account that we have, and it only allows a certain amount of people. So make sure you you register. You can bring team members, reps that listen to this podcast out there. You can do it too. I'm really excited uh, because I think we're going to bring a lot of things to a lot of people this year uh, by hosting those webinars. Obviously, clients out there listening, you're obviously welcome to join as well. Uh, this is a lot of things that we teach you anyway. But as I've always said before, the repetition is really what makes the difference. So you guys obviously welcome to hop on as well. Uh, excited to announce, we talked about this a little bit last year, excited to announce it's coming up uh, the last weekend of this January, uh, OrthoFi's national event. Uh, they're going to have a lot of really great speakers there. Uh, their CEO is going to be there. Make sure to register. If you haven't registered and sign up, register and take your team. Um, I'm proud to be the keynote at that event. So uh, their CEO is going to start off the day and then they're going to bring me up on stage. No pressure, right? <laughs> uh, you're in good hands, OrthoFi, I promise out there. We're going to give a great a great presentation. Um, it's going to kind of be the State of the Union address on where orthodontics is, uh, because that is going to be a, a, an event specific to orthodontics out there. Uh, but really looking forward to that. We have a lot of great things. Uh, the OAO Scientific uh, meeting on the keynote there in Canada. That's basically the equivalent of the AAO here in the United States. Uh, so we're excited about that. We have a lot of great uh, events coming up with Align Technology, obviously. Uh, so it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great year. Really looking forward to it. Uh, so let's dive in today. Obviously, we're talking about, and I call this the stepladder success. If you've seen me talk around the world, uh, I've talked about it plenty of times before. Uh, but it's really a stepladder to hospitality, customer service, and sales. And it's it's creating a story. Uh, each aspect of the way. We live in times, obviously, we talk about it. If you're an avid listener on the podcast, you know all about it. Uh, if you're new, uh, you know, we talk a lot about uh, different times in, in healthcare. I was just having a conversation the other day with a doctor uh, over in Boston, and, and I'm her business and life coach. And the reality of the situation is, is, is this is what we're dealing with now. It used to be where you could go to school as a doctor and come out in a million, $2 million worth of debt, and just because you had orthodontist or dentist attached to your name or plastic surgeon attached to your name, whatever it might be, uh, you could run the worst business possible. And in all likelihood, you are still going to make millions and live a very prosperous life. Those days are over. And it's a big, I think it's missed out on from a mindset standpoint by a lot of people is that those days are gone. Uh, sure, there's still some that, that can be in that situation and get lucky, but th the days are gone where just because you have that degree, you're going to be successful and make millions. They're over with, and it's because of competition. Now, competition is good for the end user, the consumer, uh, because it makes you as a clinician or you as a restaurant owner, whatever it may be, it makes you think outside the box. And as you think outside the box, and there's going to be a podcast specific this year to why competition is a great thing, because uh, I think it's viewed at wrong by a lot of people. Uh, but the reality is, if you're a patient, if you're a consumer, client, customer, the end user is benefited from competition and it makes you do things you otherwise would not do again helping the patient customer client but the reality of the situation is because of competition and because consumers are finding you differently that's what we talk about we have our youtube marketing program is the fact that youtube is now the new google all kinds of reasons for it but 
because they find you, buy from you, decide to remain loyal to you, refer to you differently, and they have so many choices, you now have to be an entrepreneur first. Now, does that mean your clinical skills don't matter? Of course not. You guys know how much I respect that. But what I'm getting at out there is the fact that you must run your business differently with a different mindset than ever before. That's going to be one of the things we're going to talk about on that webinar is who you seek advice from. And it's so critically important you shift your mindset on who you seek advice from to grow what makes up 80 to 90% of your practice because the 80 to 90% of your practice has nothing to do with dentistry, orthodontics, plastic surgery, food, if you're a restaurant owner. It has everything to do with hospitality, customer service, and sales, which is what we're going to be talking about today and how you apply it to create a story that your brand dominates throughout your community. And it's such missed opportunity by so many businesses out there. Let me give you an example. This will kind of paint the image of what we're going to dive into today. Let's say you and the family, or actually better yet, you and some friends, you go out to a really nice dinner. All right. You pick one of the more expensive places in town and you go out for a really nice night out and you pull up, the valet takes your keys, parks your car, you walk in, you're greeted by a really nice girl or guy. They take you to your table. They sit down. The waiter's great. You spend all night there. You buy two, three, four bottles of wine, expensive bottles of wine. Great atmosphere, having a wonderful time. You're laughing, telling stories. Just a great time out. Dinner comes. It's amazing. That filet mignon is cooked perfectly. The red wine is unbelievable. The side dishes are amazing. The dessert is fantastic. The bill comes, you pay, you walk out, and you're just in a happy mood. You had a great night. Then you go to get your car, and the valet doesn't smell very well, loses your keys, damaged your car, takes an hour to get your car. Maybe one of those happens or all the above. What happens to your night? And you're exactly right. Your night has just gone right down the toilet. And as humans, and this is very much pertains any type of business, as humans, that is what you're going to remember. You're not going to go and remember the great night you had. You're going to remember and you're going to tell people the story about the valet at the end of the night that ruined your experience. And this is why throughout this journey, Throughout this journey of what story is your brand going to create and tell, this is why every single employee must be on board for you to have any chance of creating a brand throughout your community that becomes known for hospitality, customer service, compassion, and more. All it takes... Because remember, I teach this all over. There are no spare customers, okay? You have to treat. And this is a real problem. I find it more of a problem for dental practices out there because it's such... For those of you listening out there that run a dental practice, let me take a second to speak to you directly. Now, this applies no matter what type of business you have and you know the orthodontic practice, whatever. But I see it rampant in dentistry. It is so difficult to convince dentists, hygienists, office managers, it's so difficult to convince them that they need to see less people. See, here's the reality. Every single, and you need to ask yourself this, every one of you out there. Here's the reality. When somebody walks through your door or when somebody calls your practice or when somebody's on your website or your YouTube station, how do you make them feel like they are the only customer or potential customer that you have. See, the reality is, is if every person walking into your business does not feel like they are the only person that you have as a client, then you have a long way to go as an operation. We see it with dental practices all the time that commit to seeing less people in hygiene, going through a very specific systematic process with every single client, customer, patient that walks through their door dominate the dental practices or just practices, period, that think an absolute jam-packed schedule equates to production. 
because a jam-packed schedule equates to loss opportunities left and right and a lack of brand creation of hospitality, customer service, etc. Because it is impossible to treat each person through your doors in a way that must be done in 2020 and beyond to create a proper brand. Now, again, this applies to every type of practice, but you've got to ask your question, everybody out there, is every person walking through your door feel like they are your only customer, consumer, patient, client, whatever you want to call them, they're all the same. That answer needs to be yes in 2020 and beyond. And that's another mindset shift that a lot of people need to make. A pack, jam-packed schedule is not what you need. What you need is, is to slow down and give your undivided attention to every single human being that walks through that door. Now, let's talk about this story. Because remember, it leads back, and at Ortho 5 event, I'm going to be talking about this. All this inevitably, this story, it leads back to what I call the three pillars of business success. Clients, you know it well. Avid listeners, you know it well. If you've seen me speak around the world, you know it well. But it's still important for those of you who have heard it to hear it again. Is the three pillars of business success. And the reason why they work every time is because what I'm about to talk about, very few companies are good at any one of them. The three pillars, digital marketing, repetitive, ongoing employee training, and then how you run your business, how you know your numbers, how you function as an entrepreneur, how you lead, how you create a better culture, how you improve yourself, those three things put together dominate the competition and virtually eliminate all advertising expenses outside of digital marketing. And again, the reason why they work so well is so few companies do any of them well. Very few companies do digital marketing well. Most of them, you know, they buy some cheap website with stock images and cut and paste content. That doesn't work anymore. Those days are gone. It's the reason why we send in a professional photographer. It's the reason why we create it from the ground floor. We code it from the ground floor. Because the reality of the situation is, is the entire website needs to be you and customized to you. It's the reason why we do it, because in 2020, it helps dominate the competition because I can ensure you your competition isn't doing it that way. Social media, same way. You go to most people's social media channels, a restaurant, a dental practice, an orthodontic practice, a consultant, whatever it might be, and they're empty. Or they have some stock image posts that they pay a company to post stuff on theirs that they post for another 50, 100, 50 clients or 500 clients. It doesn't work anymore. It has to be content created from the business, the people from within the business. It's just the reality of the world we live in. YouTube, same way. Go to most companies' YouTube stations, they're empty, or the stuff they do have is not titled properly, keyworded properly, coded properly, etc. So right there, if you do those three things within the digital marketing pillar, you dominate. Then the employee training comes in, because then, and remember, it's that story, but then you've got people calling you or scheduling online, but then, guess what? Now you got to convert them. How does the receptionist answer that call? Do they convert it? Do they convert it with hospitality and customer service or do they just happen to convert it? Big difference. Then they show up. How's that experience? How's the hospitality? How are they greeted? How's the handshake when people walk through the door? How is the eye-to-eye -eye contact, the body language? How do you make that person feel when they walk inside the door? How's money presented? How's the doctor exam, the TC exam, the hygiene exam, all of that stuff? goes into the story your brand either creates or doesn't create in regards to hospitality, customer service, etc. And that goes back to the employee training. Very few companies, restaurants, consulting companies, dental practices, orthodontic, etc. Very few businesses commit to repetitive, ongoing employee training for the existence of their organization's history. Now, why? Most people don't like to train. They don't want to deal with it. Now, a guy like me, I'm obsessed with it. I love it. Because I love to see people improve from point A to point Z. But most people are not like that. Most people look at it as a significant burden. And then in order to tie all that together, see digital marketing, that pillar, employee training, that pillar, none of them work without the third pillar bringing it all together. 
And that's how you run your business, the culture you create. Are you a leader? Do you dictate or do you inspire? The teamwork of your team, the mindset that's created, that dominates the competition, which is what the webinar on January 24th is going to be about, that I was talking about on the front end of the podcast. See, if you take out any one of those pillars, it becomes virtually impossible to tell a story from point A to point Z and everywhere in between. Why? It goes back to the restaurant example. Or in that restaurant example, and you can see how this relates to the practice. I'll give more practice-related examples as we go on today. But the valet could have been fantastic. When you initially called the restaurant to make your reservation, it could have been fantastic. But what if you showed up and your reservation was at 7, the, the girl or guy up front ignored you and didn't seat you till 7.30? Well, I can tell you this. Your waiter and the food better be that much better than it otherwise had to be in order to make up for that. See, it's lost opportunities all the way, and this happens to practices all the time. And this is stuff that, it kind of drives me nuts, listeners, because it's stuff that, it's, it's so obvious, it's right there. And sometimes I even have trouble convincing large companies whose reps go into the practice of what is really truly needed in order to maximize their success. And that's what we're talking about today. It's how do you not lose money on the phones? How do you not lose money the way you do your digital marketing? How do you not lose money the way Make Believe Name Nancy greets the, the, the client when they walk through your, your practice doors? How do you not lose money based on hospitality and customer service? How do you not lose money based on how money's presented? Complaints are handled. Objections are handled. The TC exam, hygiene exam. There's little missed opportunities throughout all of this. And because it goes back to what you're doing every single day, not a lot of it has anything to do with dentistry, orthodontics, etc. It seems like it. And there, the, this is a profession. And this is how I want you to change your mindset, the fixed versus growth, the, the fix versus growth mindset. It's a profession that feels the need. And this is not a criticism. Because some of my best friends are clinicians. Some of my best friends are our new patient group clients. Some of our best friends are our right chat clients. Some of my best friends are guys uh, that I speak with all over the world that are clinicians. But the reality is, is that because 80-90% of your practice is business, marketing, consumer, competition, money related... Those are the people that you need to seek advice from. There's 18 million clinical courses. Seek the advice of clinicians when you need the clinical help. And also seek their advice as well for the other things. I'm not saying don't. But what's left out of so many pieces, so many people's puzzles, clinicians that own their, bus their, own their business puzzles, is the fact that the only people they tend to seek advice from are other clinicians. That's how you need to broaden your scope. Because the reality is, is entrepreneurs... And those of you who, who know me know this. But our mindset is so different in how to run a business than somebody that's going to come in there that works for a corporation or somebody that's just never owned their own before. It's a totally different ballgame in our mind and how we view it. And that right now is what you need to help create this story. It's so critically important for your success. So critically important. One of the examples we talk about a lot is the iTero machine. And it's a great technology. It's fabulous technology. And it's very underutilized by the, you know, the thing is, is it's actually such a good technology that even though it's mismanaged and underutilized by a lot of practices, it still helps them grow. You know, a very simple protocol, if you have one, is a very simple protocol is you scan every patient that walks through the door. Everyone, if you're an orthodontic practice, every new patient should be scanned and the outcome simulator should be shown in the exam every single time. Dental practice, same way. Same way. Because it's way more than clear aligners. I mean, the iTero does a lot of different stuff to help a lot of different treatment starts. And there's more to it than that, of course. 
But the, the reason why the reason why I bring it up is I'm going to use this for an example to tell you an example of, of how you create a story. So if you're a receptionist, let's let's say you have the iTero machine and there's three practices all lined up next to each other on a street. OK, this is going to hopefully paint the image of what I'm trying to get across to you today. And I got off in the three pillars tangent in a couple stories simply to prove a point that the only way you tell a story, the only way is if those three pillars are successfully implemented into your organization and remain implemented. Otherwise, the story cannot happen. It makes it very difficult because it all relates back to those three pillars. So I am looking for a practice. I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to pick up the phone and call, okay? And I hit the digital marketing. You know, I'm on social media, I'm on YouTube, Google, things like that. Remember, pillar one, social media, all right? That's where your story begins. I come across three practices, the three I was given the example, they're all lined up, yours and two others. And I look at their YouTube station. I want to watch some video content. I want to learn about the personalities within the business. I want to see if I, because I, remember, social media is, it's a no like trust. That's what social media is. It's to produce content to get people to know, like you, and trust you. That's what it is. Nothing more, nothing less. This podcast is a perfect example. If you guys sit behind the podcast and you can't stand me, you're probably not going to pick up the phone and, and hire a new patient group to help you, your employees, your business. <laughs> that wouldn't make much sense. But if you like me, if you build trust with me, things like that, you are likely to eventually do it. And that's what producing content is why companies and people that produce content defeat ones that don't in today's marketplace. And it's only going to become more and more important. So I'm doing the search. I come across YouTube. And the first thing I see is your practice with all this amazing YouTube content. Oh gosh, it's so if it's YouTube content of you educating me on, you know, choosing the right doctor. It's content on you traveling all over the world, maybe showing me your passions. I love to cook, so I always use that as an example. Maybe you're cooking things at the house and you're just showing your family and a lot of content from your team having fun and video testimonials of patients. Then I see the other two practices and there's nothing, which is what most businesses have is virtually nothing. Right there automatically, you have started the story in my mind of a brand that's different, unique, special. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to stay that way, but right now, when the valet took my keys, they were really kind, smelled great, looked professional. I could tell and felt they know what they were doing. That's where we're at right now with your practice. Okay. Now, hey, let's, let's check out. I want to learn a little bit more about these practices. It's a big decision. You know, I'm going to drop, you know, let's pretend this is an orthodontic example. Okay. A lot of people do orthodontics, so we'll choose that. All right. I'm going to drop four, five, six, seven thousand dollars. It's a big choice for me. So now I'm going to go check out the social media channels and bam, your practice, Facebook pages built out, all kinds of fun content. You're having, you're having a new patient contest. You know, those who start this month get X. And by the way, guys, if you do a contest, make it good. Don't give them a pin. Make it good. Generate a brand that does some good stuff, okay? So now I'm on your Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever it might be. TikTok's a new one. We had somebody on TikTok, a client of ours the other day. I'll just give him a shout out because I love the guy. Dr. Skopak, you're listening. Hey, buddy. He had one go viral. I mean, I, I think it was like, I don't know, was it 60,000 likes? or I, I don't, It was a lot. It was insane. But the point there is, is now you're two for two when all likelihood these other two practices are 0 for two. Now, the way consumers now decide whether or not to do an online schedule or pick up the phone and call. They're not done, okay? This is going to inevitably drive me to your website if I haven't first started there, right? So now I go, let me check out this website. And I get there, 
And sure enough, you have professional photography. There's pictures of people within your practice. You guys and videos. If you guys having fun with patients, there's video bios of your team rather than those boring written bios that nobody reads. Okay, all fed in from your YouTube station. So you're simultaneously marketing YouTube every single time a video is clicked on. There's customized copywritten content specific to you. The whole website just portrays expertise, authority, fun, interaction. The other two are likely not. Stock images, boring content, this little website in a box. It just looks the same as every other business on the planet. Look, you're three for three in creating a story of a brand that's exceptional, unique, fun, authoritative, the expert in the field, different. And we live in a time where that's never been more important because you live in a competitive marketplace. You can't start your own practice anymore. Or even if you work for one, you can't run the business that way anymore of having cheap stock image stuff or posting a, you know, the same content 500 other clients get. It's ridiculous. It's not marketing and it doesn't create a story of uniqueness. You've got to get your mind out of of the way things used to be done in healthcare. It creates so many. Here's the thing. If you're the other two practices, you don't even know about me. This is the thing that I, I've taught business owners all over the world, and it's so hard because I'll give you an example. Let's use Invisalign. I talk about this all the time. When you do an Invisalign case, you feel the pain because you physically see the lab fee drawn out of your business account. It's gone. What you don't feel the pain in is an example I'm talking about right now where if you don't do it that way and somebody else in your community does and they go to them, you never even know about it. That's the pain, but you don't feel it because you would feel it if you took that treatment start amount, let's call it five grand, I put it in your account and then when they went somewhere else because you didn't do that first pillar to help create this story on the front end, if you didn't do it properly and I reached back into your business account, took out $5,000, you feel that pain. You feel it. And actually, it was never there to begin with. I would just reach in and grab five grand out because you just lost it by not doing things the way they need to be done today to create that story. So critically important. There's a video talking about YouTube marketing, the importance of it over on our YouTube station. And it, it's something that I, I really want you guys to go take a peek at because the, the, the reality of the situation is, is not a lot of people do this first pillar that I'm talking about. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen very often. So it gives such, such a unique opportunity for people that do. And the video is called How to Increase New Patients with YouTube, okay? Uh, it's important. Go to our YouTube station, New Patient Group, and take a look at it. And I think it'll really help paint an image. I mean, our clients, you already know it, uh, and, and you're already doing it well, and you're dominating your competition, and you're building out your future success, okay? Uh, because not doing YouTube right this second is going to put you out of business? Absolutely not. But it will if you don't do it and set up your YouTube station for success in five years, arguably even in three because of what's happening going on with Google and YouTube, which is why that video is important to watch. Now, back to the story. All right, here's the situation. You now have the phone call coming in, all right? You've created a story, that stepladder of digital marketing success to create an online brand that just dominates in your community. Now, does it happen overnight, which is the other challenge that human beings have to face, is that it's very difficult to do content and do, so, and do just digital marketing correctly, properly, and then expect a tomorrow result. It's like buying a, you know, a CD, a bond, or something like that. Now, your, result, your, your return is going to be better than those, but the reality is, is those don't produce an immediate result. Now, there are certain things with digital marketing that do, but the goal with digital marketing is to create a brand using a mindset that it's a marathon, not a sprint, and create a brand that just crushes people by creating an ongoing repetition of dominance, excellence, fun interaction in your community. 
And you do that with content that both talks about the importance of choosing the right doctor, which there's never been a more important time to do ever. Your clinical abilities now are at a are more important than ever before because of all the dis and I call it crap, because of all the crap that's on TV marketed to consumers. And remember, they don't know the difference. See, where their expertise lies is the things I'm talking about. Is your YouTube station built out? Is it fun? How does your website look? Social media. And that is why we're going to talk about it on the webinar on January 24th, 10 a.m. Central. That is why the better CEO and the better business is defeating the better clinician and the better practice. It's unfortunate in a perfect world it shouldn't be that way or wouldn't be that way. But the reality is that it is that way. Because of the things I'm talking about. They don't know the clinical. You'd be the best clinician on the planet, but if your YouTube station, website, social media, if it looks like it was done 20 years ago, or if it doesn't follow what the statistics from Forbes and all kinds of different publications now are putting out about what people expect from a digital presence to do business with a business, you lose. You lose to the clinician that may be, you know, they may put in the worst crown of all time or they can't move teeth worth a darn, or whatever it might be, if they're doing those things, they're going to beat you. We believe it should be both. They should get the best clinical experience and the best, quote-unquote, commercial experience, which is what we're talking about today on the commercial side. Now, the phone rings. Now it's time to answer the call. What happens? Okay, what happens? And back to the iTero example that I'm talking about, okay? So let's say over your social media channels, you have a lot of content because the content about the iTero does really well. Now, you have to know what to say, but anything is, but don't, don't take that little, what I mean is, is that it can be better if you know what to say, but anything works, okay? So if you're shooting content about the iTero machine, and I see that really cool. And by the way, nobody knows what the iTero machine is. It's not like, you know, Invisalign has a, a mass consumer brand awareness. So you want to use their name as much as you can in a legal way, of course. But the iTero machine, don't waste your time saying iTero. Heck, you, you should make it, what I believe is you should make it a name that's exclusive to your practice. Make up a name. Make it sound exclusive to you. The point is, is that nobody knows what the iTero machine is, okay? So you've got content that talks about that. Then when I call your practice, and this is why you're in direct competition with the people in your area, how they do their digital marketing. If you win that battle and the phone rings, now you're in direct competition with the receptionist down the street because they're going to call. Now, if your digital presence is better than the other practices, you're going to get the call first. But here's where that story of excellence has to continue. It can't be a situation, and this happens to every one of you listening right now, and this is the deal, is that you don't feel the pain because you don't know what's happening unless you do. That's why if you guys remember uh, that podcast that I think it's called What's the Big Deal? I Just Work Here. Uh, we have so many listens to that podcast, and it, it talks about a story of one of our clients that, that found out he was losing millions of dollars just by having – he had a simple oversight of his business that most have by paying for our mystery call program. And then, boom, he realized all kinds of things that were happening to him throughout his entire career. Of course, the receptionist didn't think it was a big deal. He was like, ah, oh, whatever, I didn't answer a call, so what, we'll get the next one. Or I wasn't that good on that call, so what, we'll get the next one. You know, that type of mentality. When you're the business owner, you never have that mentality. Again, going back to because there are no spare customers, especially in a competitive marketplace. So when that phone rings, you are in direct competition with the other receptionist answering the call as well. And you as a receptionist must understand that people are shopping. They're not calling just to make an appointment. Now, sometimes they are, but most of the time they're calling, they're calling to inquire. This is a big reason why we have Right Chat, you know, the call center that handles, that handles calls for our clients as if they were sitting inside your practice. They schedule the patient because it takes the worry that the doctor has or my phone's being answered properly and turns it over to people that are trained by me on customer service, conversion tactics, sales, fundamentals, hospitality. They're experts at handling those phone calls to ensure that you maximize every new patient call because it's so critically important in the process. But on that call, remember the iTero, on that call, 
To continue the story, your receptionist needs to be talking about the exclusive technology that you have, that our, our patients just love it. They rave about it. I can't wait for you to come in and see it is that you're going to get to see what your smile looks like at the end of treatment when Dr. Jones is all done. He is so fabulous, by the way. You're absolutely going to love the guy. Great family man. Wonderful boss. We just love working for him. And most importantly, because the doctor you choose matters, he is the best clinician I have ever seen. I can't wait for you to see these before and after photos and for you to see this technology that's going to show you a 3D rendering of what your smile is going to look like when he's finished. See, if your receptionist is handling calls that way, you dominate. Because I can ensure you the others they call aren't. But here's the piece as well, that story creation, is that I saw that on your social media channels, your website. Now the receptionist talks about it. And here's the beauty of it. The other practices next to you, they might have one. But here's the thing. If they're not shooting content about it, if they're receptionists aren't bragging about it, edifying it, talking about it in a way that's going to get me to go, wow, that's cool. Because remember, your job is to get them excited to come see you. Your job is not to just get them on your schedule. Your job is far more important than that as a receptionist. Now, you're the only practice in town that has that technology, even though the other practices do. And they may use it. See, that's how that works. Even though they have it, I don't know. Because there's no content about it, the receptionist isn't talking about it, but because you have told the story, now you're the only practice in town that has this really cool technology, and now I'm really getting excited. Now you convert me the phone, you hang up. Now what happens? And let's say, and this is what we do for our clients, a really cool welcome emails text to me right away. You click the link and it, it links back to your YouTube station. So again, it's all intertwined. It's all talking to each other. It's all working in harmony in this journey, this success journey, this story you're telling. And now it's you as the doctor standing by that machine saying something like, hey, this is Dr. Wright. You just scheduled with the practice. I want to welcome you into our family. Uh, can't wait to, for you to get here. And as my receptionist was just talking to you about, and I'm sure that you've seen on our social media videos on YouTube, this is what we call the, and then you make, you make up the name. If you want to call it the iTero, that's fine. I still think you should come up with your own name, though. This is our Right Smile Center technology. Whatever it is, come up with a name. Let me show you how it works, and then you kind of do a demonstration. One of the team members is there. You guys make it look all fun. You kind of, you, you bring up the app, you know, you can move it around on the screen. You can show them. You can explain to them why it helps you be the best clinician. Because without you educating them, they don't know. It's got to be a combination of the fun, personal, passion side with a combination of clinical education to educate people why the doctor you choose matters. Now, the story continues, obviously. We're not going to go through the whole thing today. Today is, again, back to the mindset shift. I love doing those things early on in years, which is why we're having, again, the Fix vs. Growth Mindset webinar that I really want you guys to commit to this year and register. One, again, it's going to allow us to talk to each other. We have a lot of podcast listeners out there. And the only issue with the podcast is, is sure, we get to talk to each other in the sense that you're listening to me, you're learning you're supporting us, and I really appreciate it. But if you have questions, you know, it, we don't get to interact. So these webinars are going to allow us to interact with each other. And again, create that forum, that mastermind forum, where we can all come together and talk about some really cool things. And the journey continues throughout. I mean, you can't show them all that about the iTero machine and then have them get there and then not actually do it. And that's the beauty, too, because of what we teach on having scanning every patient is that if your social media talks about it, if your receptionist talks about it, if your welcome email talks about it, well, then you better darn well do it. It kind of puts you in a place of a – it removes the excuses because now you have to do it. <laughs> You're not, you don't have a choice now. You've got to do it. And all this needs to continue because, again, back to the restaurant example. You know, if the valet's great, the initial phone call's great, the girl who seats you great, and then the waiter walks up and the waiter smells or doesn't have good personal skills or presentation skills or just doesn't come across well to you, it ruins the entire process. 
And this is why I adamantly disagree with paying one company for a website, one for social media. Oh, you need some employee training? Let's go find a company there. Oh, I, I, want, I want business coaching? Let's go find a company there. Explain to me how in the world that creates a success journey from acquisition to conversion and everywhere in between when those companies are all just out there doing their own thing. They don't communicate to each other, nothing. And it inevitably goes back to one of the many reasons why I created New Patient Group is the fact is, and so many of our, not all, a lot of our clients, they start off with one thing that they think is their most important thing. Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's all a digital marketing. Maybe it's just YouTube. Maybe it's buying you know, our phone course or, or so, another video course off of our store. Which, by the way, we're wrapping up and they're awesome is we now have our Clear Aligner growth course for sale in our store, and it is awesome. It's so good. So, so good. But the point is, is that a lot of our clients do everything with us. One payment a month, we help them create this journey, this story, via every aspect. We also help it not go backwards, and they literally eliminate all other payments to grow their business. All gone. Because you don't need pay-per-click. You don't need postcards. You don't need TV. You don't need billboards. You need those things if the three pillars of success, digital marketing, employee training on a repetitive ongoing basis, and how management, how you run your business and view your business, as long as one of those th things lack or all three of them lack, you will always have to do outside advertising. It's like a Band-Aid on a wound. You'll always have to do it. But if you get your systems in place to where everything speaks to each other, you will dominate and create this brand, this journey of excellence. Because again, every team member, it, it can't, that's why mystery shoppers are so important. Not just, to, it's not about firing people, but it is about having oversight to create a culture of success through accountability. You have to have visibility of what's going on when you're not looking. You have to have it. Because one little thing, the digital marketing is great. The phone call is great. When they walk through the door, make-believe name Judy just gets up and gives them the nicest handshake, full attention on that person. Because remember, it's another reason why Right Chat exists is the fact is, is you've got to have phones or you're out of business. But phones also keep you from providing each person that walks through your door with an experience as if they were the only one you had. Why? Because the worst place you can answer the phones is up front, and that's where almost everybody does it. So you take that away, and now their 100% focus on, is on a proper handshake, immediate greeting. We have water or coffee over there. Allow me to get you a bottle of water or make you a cup of coffee. It's just a total different experience walking in, which is why, again, our clients win. So the handshake is great. That you take them back with no wait time, which by the way, if new patients ever sit in your waiting room or whatever you want to call that room, then you're losing money. Why? Because the second there, you know, what hits the chair, you are just like everybody else. There's no uniqueness there. That's what people expect when they walk through the door. You have to go above their expectations. They cannot sit. Got to be greeted immediately. If they're not, the perception is, is you're too busy and you don't respect their time. You take them back. The experience is great. The doctor exam's great. If you're an orthodontic practice, TC exam's great. Dental practice, maybe they go see the hygienist. That goes great. Now it's time to present the money. Make believe name Timmy blows the whole thing. Comes across as a non expert, can't overcome objections, can't handle, maybe they have a couple, not complaints, but you know, a couple of things that maybe they, they're worried about. Goes back to the objections. Maybe doesn't know or understand consumer psychology and how it relates to money and how you avoid what we call the sticker shock factor that our financial presentation course talks a lot about. Maybe he doesn't understand those things. Maybe he messes all those things up, maybe just one, but blows everything else that went really well. And see, that is how one employee, one single operation inside your organization can break creating a story that your brand is better than everybody else. Now, if one thing goes wrong, does it mean you're going to go out of business and destroy your 2020 and beyond? Of course not. You guys know that. It's not what I mean. 
But the reality is look at it as a ladder. That's why I call it the step ladder of success. You're climbing this ladder, right? And then boom, the, the, the step ladder that your feet are on, it snaps. What's going to happen? Well, what you're holding on to that next step, it has to be that much better because you're hanging on it. Otherwise, you fall. So if that next person in line has to do their job that much stronger, that much better in order to make up for the previous step that broke or was broke in or wasn't as sturdy as it otherwise could be. And that is why ongoing employee training and how you run the business, hold people accountable, how you know your numbers, how you bonus people, the job descriptions, which we have lots of podcasts this year about that. Actually, the job descriptions and bonuses is a podcast I've been wanting to do for a while, but you have to understand we have such a long list that it's just a matter of time before we get to it. But I want you to truly think, do I commit to repetitive ongoing employee training? I mean, heck, what the employees do every single day is hospitality, customer service, sales, which I haven't gotten to yet today. But let's talk about it really, really quickly. For those of you out there who listen to the podcast, you understand this. Our clients, you're not afraid of it. But sales for whatever were, and, and I know the reason, and the reason is, is people don't know what the definition of it is. They actually don't know what sales is. So therefore, when they hear it, you get this cartoon image of this, you know, dirty used car salesman trying to mess around with you on price and things like that. So therefore, people go, I don't want to be that way. I don't want to be in sales. Well, here's the reality. You're in sales. You can deny it all you want, but you are in sales. Your digital marketing, how you do it, sales. Your receptionist, sales. How you greet people when they walk through the door, sales. How you present money, sales. TC exam, doctor exam, hygiene, sales. It's all selling. Now, you're probably going, oh, God, I don't like that if you don't listen to this podcast a lot. But here it is. All selling is, this is it, is educating in an ethical, honest manner in a way that places more value on what you offer than other places they can choose to spend their disposable income. That's all it is, guys. That's it. And the reality of the situation is, is your team members are put in places to do that via every aspect of the appointment process. How they shake hands when people walk through the door is sales, hospitality, customer service. And remember, you can't have customer service without sales. You can't have sales without customer service. Why? Well, because remember the definition of customer service. It's when you, as a business, receive what you want from your respective clientele. That's how the definition starts. It's a very misunderstood definition. While your respective clientele believes they got more than what they expected via every interaction with your business. That is the reason why very few companies create a brand of customer service because that definition only happens if your people know how to sell in an ethical, honest manner that places more value via every aspect of whatever your appointment process is to get people to choose you over the competition. They're intertwined together. You can't have one without the other. So this is what your people are doing every day, time management, efficiency, all these things. And if they're not repetitively trained on an ongoing basis on these things, you lose. Does it mean you go out of business? Like I said, no, but it will be a time where that is the case. There's going to be so many practices, so many corporations out there, so much competition. And that doesn't even include what the real competition is. And that's whether I choose to spend my money with you or whether or not I go buy a flat screen TV or some other type of product that I see more value in to choose to spend my disposable income over your services. That's still and always will be your number one competition. So when you're putting value on your services, it goes far beyond, oh, I've, I've got to beat the doctor down the street. You have to beat all the other brands that stay on the mind of the consumer and place more value in their mind than you. And it's impossible without the three pillars of success. You want a great digital marketing presence? Well, if you don't run the business right, it's not going to happen. Why? Because your employees are going to fight with you and try to get you to not make them do it. Now, it's supposed to be something fun that you do together, and most employees want to do it, but there's always going to be a couple that don't, and then you have a choice to make. Do you, do you let them ruin the culture because you don't hold them accountable? Or do you hold them accountable to it at a standard, at a level 
that the Ritz Carlton would. And that's why I always talk about people talk to me, oh, I want to be like the Ritz Carlton. I say, no, you don't. Let me find out if you actually do, because the reality is in order to create a brand that way, accountability and people hear that word. Accountability is a good thing. Employees love it. Why? Because they know their time's not being wasted. They don't want to go and do social media content for three months and then all of a sudden it goes down the toilet. It's a waste of time. They don't want to learn phone training and then all of a sudden you don't do it anymore and they go back to how they used to be. It's a waste of time. So if you create that culture inside your organization of we're going to do things for two months or three months or we got these come and go consultants, well, guess what? The employees, every time you do something, be like, yeah, whatever, here we go again. If they know that whatever you implement, you're going to hold them accountable to it and it's not going to leave, man, you're going to create a culture of success and accountability like you can't believe. See, that's how it works. Don't you see? And this is a podcast in itself. But don't you see if you're an employee and ah, here we go again, we're going to go to an event, come back, nothing's going to get done. Well, do you think they're going to be engaged or checked out at the event? They're going to be checked out. Obviously, don't blame them. All of this has got to work together. Together as one. And it's done with those three pillars of business success. I hope today I really started to change that mindset. And I hope I motivated you to really look at your business differently and look at every aspect of it. Do you know the lost opportunities that are occurring? Do you have a a stinky valet inside your practice that's losing keys? banging cars? Do you have a concierge up front that doesn't greet people right, ignores them because they have to answer the phones? How are your receptionists? Do they give an experience? And again, guys, this is not, are your people smiling and friendly? I hear that a lot. Don't make that mistake. If your people smile and are friendly, that's great, good for you, and that's part of the journey. Sure as heck makes it a lot easier to train people that are organically smiling and friendly. Bubbly personality, people skills, things like that. But the reality of the situation is, is that that is a small piece to the overall puzzle that you need to accomplish in telling a story that creates a brand of excellence. Rethink how everything works inside your practice. The title of your job descriptions, how you bonus, the numbers you know versus the numbers you don't know. Unfortunately, the numbers you don't know, and we've done plenty of podcasts. This is our employee performance indicator discussion. The numbers that most business owners don't know are the numbers they actually need to know, and the numbers they do know are less important than the numbers they don't. Let's make 2020 a great year, guys. Let's, let's do these webinars together. Let's have this chat on the webinars together. Let's create a, a podcast community, per se, where we join each other on these webinars. And let's have some fun. Let's learn. Let's get to know each other. And let's create that brand of excellence for your practice together in 2020. It all has to work in harmony, guys. Every single thing you do has got to tell that story. It can't work as a separate entity. It doesn't work anymore. Bring your organization together from point A to point Z and everywhere in between and create a brand of customer service and hospitality with those three pillars. Because remember, customer service and hospitality apply to everything. It applies in your doctor exam. It applies in the TC hygiene exams. It applies how you present money. It applies in the front end with your digital marketing, your phones. It applies to everything. And unfortunately, most companies lack in applying those things via every aspect of their organization. And it's why the three pillars of business success, it's why when you do them and do them at an exceptional level, you will destroy your competition. But you can't leave anything out. If you want to get to a level where you can eliminate advertising, increase profits, increase growth, and dominate everybody in your community. You can do it. Let's make 2020 your greatest year ever. Remember to register for Friday, January 24th at 10 a.m. Central. Uh, Go to newpatientgroup.com backslash webinar registration. Go there. Reserve. You can bring team members if you want. It can just be you. Reps out there. We have a lot of reps that listen. You're welcome to join as well so you can bring knowledge back to your practices. Uh, But let's 
make 2020 great. Let's do it together. Let's create that brand of excellence by telling a story of excellence. Thanks for being avid listeners and have a great day. Bye-bye.